You've heard of playing tall, you've heard of playing wide, but did you hear of playing both tall and wide? With the recent update, England has a new meta. Not only do we have both all of the French lens and the English lens, and we're splitting France equally with France, but it also costs us only 11 mana to develop provinces when we already developed this 8 times. And for 10,000 likes, we'll be covering Brandenburg as well as we'll be doing the second part for this where we form a special hidden nation england definitely is one of the strongest nations in eu4 and at the start of the game you are actually the third great power in the world you also start in the english channel node and we start with 50 percent of this node which is a massive amount and just in the first few years we're gonna bring this up to 70 percent plus not to mention as the english you are one of the best suited nations to to be playing toll today we'll be showing how you can go down the playing toll path as the english whilst still having a strong foothold in the mainland of europe but that being said we will not be getting the personal union over france from the beginning with the recent update what happens is when the event of main triggers you can get a personal union over france i highly recommend that you do not get that pu because just getting that pu is 99 aggressive expansion and despite having a French PU you will not be able to keep them in check at least for the first 10 to 15 years and you're gonna get a coalition of pretty much half of the HRE including Austria and almost all of North Italy and because you will likely have no manpower and a very bad economic state after fighting the French you will be completely crushed if that coalition triggers not to mention it just doesn't make sense to get the French PU when they're massive you can get the French PU later or you can simply get all of the flans via vassals for less aggressive expansion and you can integrate and directly own those lands a lot faster first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the forts in uh, the mainland here we're only keeping the fort in La Bourde and you'll see later why we're gonna get our rivals of course France Scotland and Burgundy our first three rivals we can get our parliamentary debate we can go for the crown land ownership is not bad actually i don't mind getting five percent crown lands extra we also start by default with 33 percent crown lands so we're gonna give the plus one admin points and the plus one diplo points as well as we're gonna be selling titles so we start with 900 ducats give out patronage of the arts exclusive trade rights for the extra monopoly and dev cost reduction in uh, center of trade provinces so because of this if we set up the encourage development edict for example in lincolnshire it only costs us 30 mana points to develop this province from day one religious diplomats is not bad in the recent update as well as oversight for the clergy so we get the extra loyalty equilibrium up we're gonna give the minus 25 advisor cost reduction privileges later on after we get one stability you actually start start with a level 1 50% cheaper advisor for admin so with the well connected trait that we have as well it's only 0.40 ducats that's ridiculously cheap we can even upgrade him to level 2 and he only costs 1.6 ducats a month same goes for John Fortis Q here exactly same situation you can also upgrade him to level 2 sadly our starting leader is absolutely trash and we will have the war of the roses as consequence which is basically going to get rid of this guy and we're going to have a way better leader that being said i do strongly recommend you get a royal marriage and an alliance with either aragon or castile both of these are good but try to prioritize the one that has france as a rival so in my case that would actually be aragon so i'm gonna ally aragon i can also ally castile but if they rivaled aragon they likely will break the alliance we have the levy the troops mission for which we need to have 100 percent force limit and 60 percent manpower and we we want to do it now because if we wait we only can do this mission after 10 to 15 years because we're gonna be in the French war we're gonna be in the Scottish war and we need to do it before any of those wars so because of that we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start exploiting our manpower dev all around first off the French lens make sure you also lower the autonomy in Maine as well as Alençon because they start with 80% autonomy and you get manpower based off of uh, how much autonomy these provinces have so if you don't lower the autonomy you get less manpower from them also I recommend
recommend that you unstate all of these provinces and then you concentrate development. Don't worry, I know you're losing a lot of development. Actually, don't do it in Calais. It's the only one you should keep as it is. The reason we did that was so we can actually get a little bit more dev in London. So we start with 30 development. So that means if we exploit one development in London now, it's a thousand manpower. If we don't do this trick with the French lens, it would be a lot less. And another reason why we're doing this is because we will be releasing the nation of Gascony. So even if this nation has less development, it's not a massive deal. We actually prefer Gascony to have a little bit less development here because we will have to integrate them eventually. But first, we want to feed them all of the cores that they have on the French lens. We're also going to be recruiting the free company in the province of Oxford. And I also personally prefer to convert all the Welsh lands as well as the Isle of Man to English culture. Don't forget to also convert Cornwall to English culture. It's really cheap, only 22 Diplo points at the start. And what it does is it prevents separate rebels from spawning in these provinces if these are English provinces. It also makes the cores of these countries go away. So eventually, this is all 100% English with no trace of anything else ever existing in these areas. Plus, because these are not accepted cultures, even though they are in the same culture group, you still get a debuff here. There you go, minus 15 manpower attacks and sailors modifier. So why would we get that modifier, especially since it scales up as time goes by, when we can just do a quick boost of Diplo points at the start and get rid of these cultures. If you rival the French and the Austrians also rival the French, you likely will be able to get an alliance with the Austrians. I recommend you go for it. Austria is a really good ally to have, especially against the French. And the most nine head move that we can do is sell the province of Maine to the country of Brittany. Go to sell province Maine. Only 45 ducats, not really much. By selling the province of Maine to Brittany, we buy ourselves a good five years before the French attack us because the event doesn't trigger anymore. And in those five years, we can consolidate our lands and get ready for the war against the French. And we attack them instead. Plus, if they do decide to attack us before, they have to fight the Austrians they have to fight the Aragonese, so we are more than safe, which we would not be in the War of Maine. And we just recruited the Free Company, which means we can do the Levy the Troops mission. What this mission does is it gives us a CB against everybody in Ireland, as well as everybody in Scotland. Essentially, we have a vassalization CB against the uh, Scots. Do take note that the Scottish are guaranteed by the French, so I recommend you attack the Scots after you've dealt with the French, or whenever you are ready to deal with the French for that matter. 11th of December is here, so we're gonna attack whichever Irish nation would be the easiest to attack first. So in my case here, I got Tyrone with no allies. I also have Sligo with no allies, Clan Ricard, Thomond, almost all of them except Ormond and uh, Desmond have no allies. So one month after the other, I'm just gonna continuously attack all the Irish. Within the first two years of the game, we're gonna completely conquer all of Ireland. In the meanwhile, while we're also going to get a claim on Brittany because we do want to take our province of Maine back and we also want to take the rest of Brittany back for that matter. 11th of January, so one more. This time we're going to be attacking uh, Ulster and their ally in Ofali. We also can farm some ships by attacking the Irish fleets. The Irish actually have a lot of trade ships, so if you're lucky, you can get a good four to five trade ships from these few quick wars. We also managed to get a Trastamara consort, so that's that means we're gonna get a Trastamara succeed to the throne once our guy dies. So if we play our cards right and we navigate the English Civil War correctly, we might be able to get a, the same dynasty as Aragon and Castile, which means we might be able to get a personal union over both of these nations, as well as the French if we want to, after we've consolidated the British Isles. And that's a Shtak and Vapenicum. And look at that, boys. Uh, France attacked Brittany for the reconquest of Maine. Oh, bruh. They can't really pick on us now, so they have to pick on the Brits. I mean, Bretonians. Oh, damn. France literally only took one province and provided attacked for the province of Maine as well. But, uh, they don't have Maine anymore. So what are you taking, Provence? Well, it took us three years, not two years, to get all of the Irish lands. But we did do it eventually. So, now as you can see, nobody except the Irish nations care about the fact that Ireland was completely conquered. But let's face it, when did the English care about the 
Irish people opinion. Am I right here, boys? Alright, well, it looks like the uh, Provence didn't really take much from Brittany, so it's not really worth uh, vassalizing them. We're just gonna directly take the lands from there. Remember that we're also waiting for the English Civil War to trigger. We want to carry on with that entire event series before we get any personal unions, because if you're not careful, even if you get a union over France after the English Civil War, you might also lose that union over France once the uh, outcome is enforced. Joy to the world, the War of the Roses just triggered. Alright, let's count here. Man points. Looks like Henry's got more mana points, so I'm gonna support Henry, and he's gonna be our brand new, spanking brand new, Chad Lord of a Leader. 365 is insane, bolts, and it's gonna help us out catch up with the mana points shortage that we had from before. That also means we gotta transfer some more troops so we can actually fight off this uh, pretender in the English loans here. A very important thing I recommend you do is you cancel the uh, Gascon culture and you promote the Irish culture because we want to have Irish in our country. For a few reasons, we might just pull a little sneaky and become Irish ourselves, if you know what I mean. And second off, uh, they're really rebellious, so if you accept them, they're gonna be slightly less rebellious, but not really completely less rebellious, keep that in mind. 500 freaking days to take this one fort is insane, but hey, whatever, now we can actually annex them and shouldn't be much of a coalition. Let's see what we got here. Three countries, Provence, Scotland, France, literally nobody important. We also can get rid of the last of the pretender armies. Oh, I just realized France actually pillaged capital on Brittany. That's why their development is lowered already. And there you go, the end of the War of the Roses. We even got one stabilite. Let's uh, go back home now. We can do the mission War of the Roses and that's just a little bit less aggressive expansion impact. But most importantly, something bad happened. <laughs> the uh, French actually allied the Scots. So that means if I attack Scotland or if I attack the French, I gotta fight the other one. So I'm gonna do the sneaky thing here and I'm actually gonna attack Leinster and um, not cobaldrate the Scots and then peace out the Scots, cancel their alliance with the French and then after attack the French. And we can put Mr. Tudor as our heir. We got one more stability from that too. So now what we can do is we can disinherit Mr. Henry Tudor and wait for the Trastamara to come as our heir or we can make him a general because he is of age and once he dies as a general we don't lose the 50 prestige. We also can get 5% more crownlands now. It's gonna give us a few rebels but nothing we can't really handle and that means in just five years we got all of Ireland as well as 21 crownlands not to mention the plus one admin and plus one diplo mana points without taking that horrible estate statutory privilege that I highly recommend nobody takes by the way. Oh and the best part guys there's nothing except English people in England okay no other cultures to be seen. You know that old English saying right you can't have a rebellion if there's no rebels. Boom. We are super low on troops though we got 18 out of 37 so we're gonna recruit the uh, grand company now we're gonna set them up in the north here next to the border with the uh, scots don't worry it's not even over our land force limit and the best part is that we have 500 ducats no loans and we're still gaining money if we were to go for the pu against the french we would be a massive debt right now and we would likely die off to either the coalition or the english civil war slash war of the roses all right boys time to declare the war on uh, these guys here in Leinster and for the north here we're gonna be uh, rushing for Dumfries as well as uh, Lothian. Oh Scotland you in a world of hurt bro. Alright that's uh, literally the entirety of the Scottish army. They got zero troops left so they agreed to whatever we want them to agree to but like I said only France alliance cancelled that's it. You're getting off easy this time uh, Scotland getting off easy indeed. Imagine actually wanting to be a free independent country. How dare you Ireland make sense such high demands. Alright, now we can do Conquest of Ireland that offers a little bit of extra goods produced, my boys. And we're gonna be disbanding the Free Company because it only has 2,500 manpower in the manpower pool, so we're gonna need a new mercenary company. One of the best decisions ever, Designate Calais as the staple port offers 10 mercantilism, which is amazing because the higher the mercantilism we have, the more provincial trade power we get. And we want more trade power, of course, so we get the majority of the trade share in the English Channel node. Plus, it offers flat 
that stats for the city of Calais. We went over our force limit and we got the independent company which has 64,000 of its own manpower pool and we're gonna use this to break away and destroy the French manpower pool. Plus we've been curring favors with our allies so we're gonna call in Austria, Aragon and Portugal in this war. We're gonna call belligerent Provence as well. This should be a fairly easy war. We're gonna try and peace out Provence first and uh, of course the main target is gonna be to get most of the cores that we can for our vassalant. The best part is that whilst I'm sieging down their forts, the French are actually focusing on the Austrians or before they were actually focusing a little bit on the uh, Aragonese. And let's face it, they can never touch my heartlands here where most of my economy is coming from, boyos. Actually, I can already peace out the nation of Provence. I'm gonna go for this peace deal here. It's not much aggressive expansion either for that matter. And now I can also do this mission that offers a permanent claim on the island of Gibraltar. Sorry, not the island, the province of Gibraltar. It's not an island, right? We have basically completely annihilated France, and I'll be honest with you guys, most of the work was done by my allies, as you can see from all the battles over here. Regardless, though, you should still hire both of the mercenary companies, because it's not an easy war, and they did help a lot, actually, fighting the French also. So we've transferred most of the provinces over to our Gascon vassal, with the exception of Armagnac, because we got a core ourselves on Armagnac. So because we have that core, we're gonna take this directly for us. Now in the peace deal itself, we're taking all of these provinces here plus the two provinces to connect our lands. So now we have a connection from the north to the south. And I also wanted to take Carcassonne so I can release the nation of Toulouse and feed it its own cores after in the next war. But Carcassonne actually was taken by Aragon. So I'm gonna take instead Vivere, which is owned by me right now. I mean, it's controlled by me anyway. There you go. This is a pretty fair deal, I would say. Can I take Anguamont? No, I cannot. Actually, I could take if I just waited for a few more months. See how's the aggressive expansion. There you go. This is exactly what I'm talking about here, and we got an air. Yeah, well, it looks like we're gonna have to kill this air also because I, I really want to get Atrastamara so I can PU the Castilians and the Aragonese. And we'll wait for a few more months, of course. Let's get this uh, tech as well. The Austrians just took Bourbonnais, so that's exactly the score that we need. Daria go close to 100%. Before we do this, though, we remember have to get the strategic control mission done in order to get this mission done You need to control Paris so you have to click this button when you are at war with the French now We got the French PU uh, Mission and we can also do conquest of Brittany that offers a lot of claims in the south parts of uh, France Oh, actually it offers claims in the north part of France my bad and the booyah do boyos Look how much of the French lands we have in 1458 as direct Direct control and if we want to go for the Union in the next war they only have the North provinces which means they're gonna be very loyal easy to control and most importantly it's gonna be a lot faster integrating them but honestly the meta kind of is just directly owning all of this shit especially since we're gonna release Toulouse right now there you go in the province of Vivre so in the next war we can take the other three provinces they have and basically take them for like close to no aggressive experience expansion. Speaking of aggressive expansion, look at this beautiful map here. Literally nobody is in a coalition. Burgundy could potentially join, but I don't care if they do join though. And now we can start focusing on the Scots. Let's start with the war against the Scottish. And we don't have the subjugation CB anymore. It did expire. Sadly, I didn't take advantage of that. So we're just going to have to go for a good old classic conquest against the Scots. Looks like the Iberian wedding just happened. This is actually good for us because if we manage to PU Castile, we get both Castile and Aragon under us as a junior member, rather than having to declare war on both of them separately. It's a great day in England, because we're attacking the Scotsman. And yeah, I kind of use the Scottish accent when attacking the Scots, but don't think about it too much, okay? Oh wow, Dumfries fell pretty darn fast over here. Get this battle on the roll so we take out the Scottish army. I'm also doing this because I want to get some extra army tradition which does help out with improving the quality of my troops overall and why wouldn't Ireland be completely up in arms whilst I'm at war I mean it's just the right thing to do oh no dude my guy just died and oh okay I was gonna complain about the fact that I lost a lot of my uh, mana points now because he was a uh, three five six and this guy is not really great, but he is a Trastamara because we got the royal marriage with these boyos in the south and we disinherited 
the air that we had. So it's pretty easy to get the Trastamara. Now, all we gotta do is claim their throne whenever they got a weak air, and then we can attack them. Also, I wanna mention, if you guys wanna get this save, you can find it on my Patreon. Link is in the description. Good old Lothian, the greatest city in England. Oh, I mean Scotland. For now, for the first peace deal, what we're gonna go for here is most of the Scottish lands. We're letting them keep two provinces, and I know what you're thinking. Oh, but Ludi would have been better to subjugate them. Yes, it would have been a lot less aggressive expansion, and we would not be wasting so many admin points if we were just to subjugate them. But realistically speaking, if you do subjugate them, it's gonna take you 50 years until you can actually take advantage of this land, because you're gonna wanna integrate them via the decision form British nation diplomatically, rather than uh, annexing them if you go for that option, right? So you don't waste the diplo points. And once the truce is over, we just get the last two provinces and we have everything we need to form the British nation militarily, not diplomatically. I was also going to cancel the alliance with the Castilians, but then I realized why not use Castile in a war against the Burgundians? And this is going to be a short war. It's a humiliation war. So we're doing this so we get the 300 mana points. Oh God, we got a retarded air, everybody. We're going to have to disinherit. No, there goes another 50 PP. I mean, prestige. There you go, Henry the Good. This is Henry the Good, guys. 362 is decent. And it looks like France is getting a beggar because they're integrating their uh, vassals. We can also enforce our show of strength. And afterwards, look at this, boys. We got 300 extra mana points. Looks like the French don't really want to wait for the Burgundian inheritance. And they actually attacked Burgundy right now. And the French took a massive chunk out of uh, Burgundy. They took five provinces? No, they took six provinces actually, which means to get all the French provinces, we would have to go into three separate wars or just use the PUCB against them. My plans of feeding my second vassal of Toulouse, the cores of France and the south, have gone down the schnitzel drain because France grew in size by quite a little bit, so it's actually a lot more viable to get the PU over the French now. We're also going to co-belligerate Scotland so we get whatever lands we have left in the north of our little island here. And not to mention, we also enabled scootage on Toulouse. So in two years, we're going to start annexing Toulouse. This way, Toulouse and Gascony get annexed at the same time and we don't get the minus three Diplo Rep debuff. Well, we get the debuff, but we don't have any more vassals to integrate, so it's A-OK. -okay. Does anyone know how you actually say goodbye in Scottish? With Scotland out, we can do Conquest of Scotland that offers more claims now on the Norwegian lands of Iceland here and I definitely will gun for these because I want to get these uh, provinces so I can colonize North America via the north rather than going through the south. You do need Diplotech 7 in order to reach the new world via the north after you get Iceland. All of France has been occupied. They did occupy Austrian lands in the meanwhile. I'm actually going to let Austria fight this battle off before I peace out. Daria go. Now France has close to no troopers and it means that we can get our union with France, canceling as many of their cores as we can. And now let's enforce our union. Wait for one day and look at this, guys. There's literally almost no nations in this potential coalition against us. Just a few nations in the Netherlands, most of which are junior members of Burgundy and a couple more in the HRE proper. Now it's time to improve relations with the French because once our leader dies, if we have below zero relations with the French, we lose the personal union. Also, look at this. 1480, we already have all of this schnapps here. Remember, after you integrate your vassals, that they will have 60% autonomy, so you have to lower this autonomy in all of the provinces that they had before. Holy shit, guys. Castile has no heir, and that means I can claim the throne, but I still have the alliance with them. So I'm gonna cancel this alliance, and fingers crossed that they don't get any heir. Technically, I could just claim right now and attack, but I already have quite a little bit of aggressive expansion. Chances of them getting an heir in five years are pretty high. But then again, Isabella's 55 years 
old, so having kids might not really be on the table for her right now. And if she dies, then there's gonna be a succession war between me and Poland, and I'm assuming I'm gonna get the PU in that succession war, unless Poland's gotta trust Samara too. No, they have a Jagiellon, so I don't think that's gonna be an issue. If I wasn't playing tall, I would definitely attack right now, but I am playing tall, like I promised, so we're not doing the naughty. Oh, really? I just saw. Aragon somehow is not a junior member of uh, Castile anymore, so that means I cannot even PU them because they got Gaspar Mortadelli here. This is schnitzel, dude. This is horrible schnitzel. They still have not gotten an heir, and we just need to wait for three more years. Halfway there, guys. We pretty much have uh, France under control now, just need 15 more relations. So that means we can start our war against the Norwegians. Let's go with this so we can get our islands here, our beloved islands, that is. Rightful English clay, am I right now? Let's get some maps from uh, the Portuguese. Let's start with the North Atlantic since we have a strategic interest in there. Truce is over with Castile, but guess what? They got an Enrique, and this one's not a 0, zero, zero. Plus, for the first time in known history, their heir started with a strong claim. I never get heirs with strong claims, man. I always get them with weak claims. How come they got a strong claim heir all of a freaking sudden out of their ass? We got their capital. Let's see if that's enough to persuade them into giving us what we want. Uh, looks like that's a big no. 44.52. It means we got to get a few more provinces before we peace out the Danes. How about now, Denmark? You okay with it now, sir? 16.57.51. We can even get some money from them. And that is amazeballs. Didn't need to struggle too much for this. Now we can start our colonial adventures as well. Hello, American East Coast. Nice, man. We don't even have exploration ideas but we already know about the new world from the Portuguese amazing allies that we got here and what I did obviously in case you're wondering is I sent one ship with one unit in it by the border here which is enough to buy the maps from the Portuguese oh look at that guys Aachen wants to know about the North Atlantic it goes without saying but every time you're playing as a Catholic nation try your best to become the courier controller we got a 20% chance but we've had a 20% chance for five previous times as well and every single time it was was anybody else except us so still try it because if you do get the courier controller you get massive AE impact reductions as well as other amazing bonuses that especially in the early game are gonna give you a huge boost looks like the Austrians this time managed to get the uh, Burgundian inheritance just in time for them because I was actually thinking of attacking the Burgundians but hey it is what it is now seems like I'm gonna have to attack the Austrians after all uh what just happened Austria declared war for unification with Burgundy didn't they already have a union over Burgundy? What the hell? Okay, I'm assuming they went with the wrong choice during the diet, and that probably also means that all of these fuckers are in the HRE. Yes, they are. Oh, man, that means I gotta dismantle the HRE in that case, because this is disgusting here. This doesn't really seem fair for Burgundy, does it? They are literally fighting half of Europe. <laughs> I really like the favors interaction. You ask, why do I like the favors interaction? Well, this is why. Austria doesn't have an heir. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna request that they put one of my heirs, Henry the Trastamara, as their heir, which is my way of basically ensuring that I can get in the future a union over Austria. I am so conflicted right now. Aragon's heir is a von Habsburg, and guess what? All of the lowland countries also have von Habsburgs as their heirs. So what I'm thinking now is maybe after I get the PU over Castile, I can switch over to von Habsburg. Unless they get get the Trastamara like planned. They still have the air here. Not to mention, Naples also is a Trastamara and is within my sights. We're basically fielding 70,000 units and we're still making insane amounts of money. I actually managed to get workshops in pretty much all of my provinces right now, which is gonna double my income. I'm also doing the Anglophile achievement in the other previous run, so expect that to come out soon. But if we get 10 likes on this video, I'll do the same second part for this as well as a brand new Brandenburg video and until the next time check out this awesome France video and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support